Welcome to Grand Monday Nights. I'm Barbara Lorenz, your host. So great to have you here. I know I repeat myself, but I mean it from the bottom of my heart every single week. So great to have you here. We've got a special friend, somebody that I've had the opportunity to meet here at Skyline, who's involved in the grandparenting ministry there and in many other places, Pastor John Irwin. And uh, so, John, go ahead and open your audio and video. You are a semi-retired pastor who is about to start a new ministry as the interim teaching pastor at Grace Church in Glendora in September. You live near us here as well as in San Fernando Valley, and you're going to share tonight with us Short distance grandparenting. So go ahead and open your audio and video and join us, John. Thank you, Barb. Let me introduce my family to you. We're going to talk about short distance grandparenting, living on the family compound. That's my wife and four of my five grandkids. And while I'm doing this introduction, you'll see some other pictures of our kids. That's my beautiful wife of 45 years, August 5th. We've been married and in ministry, and I retired in December of 21. And I think retirement's kind of overrated. Uh, I just call myself a free agent now, emphasis on the free. And we have a picture of our daughter and grandkids at a wedding where my son just got recently married. And here's a picture of his bride. And of course, next picture of them with the grandkids. So special to do these family memories. But how did this family compound come together? Well, my son approached me and my son-in-law and said, hey, I found this property, it is a disaster. It needs so much work. What do you think about us going in on this together? That can be your retirement home. <laughs> I said, uh, sounds like a lot of work and 64 subs or so later and four and a half months completely gutted. We got in in December of 20 and this began this nomadic lifestyle of going back and forth between Agura Hills, where I was still a pastor at Agura Bible Fellowship. And in 2022, our first year of retirement, we spent 92 days in San Diego. And and uh, everybody says, well, that's kind of cool. You kind of go back and forth and get plugged in. Well, you know, it's not as easy as you think. And so we're going to talk about some of the things when you live in two places. And I, I realize for some of you, this is your dream. But I can tell you also, there are some big time challenges my daughter's going to watch this tomorrow, and so she'll validate these things. I, I, I know that as I do this, we jokingly say that they live in the big house where all the messes are made, and then we live in the smaller house where it's quiet and where we can recover. It's really not a vacation home. It's the work home. And so here are some observations about living on a property together. This would apply to those of you who live near your kids and can see them regularly, whether you are five minutes or you know 30 minutes away. And so we live in the same community, but trying to be intentional in raising your grandparents, uh, raising your grandparents, yeah, them raising me, is, uh, is a real trick because they're literally about 100 feet from our doorstep, from their front door to our front door. So let me get right to it. Let me clarify some expectations. And you do that early and often, just like Cheryl gave some marital advice a few months ago to our kids. So how do you balance their needs and your wants? So I believe you have to have this communication understanding. All miscommunication is a direct result of differing assumptions. So you can see a picture of us around this campfire as we talk about this. Long distance grandparenting on Zoom calls, we don't have to do that, but there are some downsides. So we built this fire pit so we could kind of work through some of this stuff. Now, you can feel very unintentionally guilty because you feel like you should do more. But as we're getting older, we have only so much energy. So here are a couple practical things we had to clarify. Uh, number one, uh, they can arrive at 7 a.m., that's the earliest they can arrive. And we always have two at least grandkids at our door by seven and they never come fed. It's 7 a.m. You know, grandma, can you make us some toast or can we have whatever? And so it's really cute. We have some special alone time with them with our early risers. Secondly is I am a baseball guy. My grandkids are being raised in a non-baseball family 
they do everything but jujitsu. They got soccer. They got dance. And so my wants aren't all that relevant. I have become a huge soccer fan because of my grandkids, because that's about their needs, not my wants. How often do we get down there? Just want to answer that question quickly. Uh, like I said, 10, 12 days a month. month. Uh, we try to arrange our schedule to be around there when there's birthdays and tournaments and all that. But more than that, we realize that with our daughter having five kids, they all turn a year older this fall. But right now they're 10, 8, 6, 5, and almost 2. It's an all hands on deck experience. And so we try to get down there because we want to be down there. But we got one foot in San Diego and one in Agur Hills. So let's go to the next slide. What are our roles? What do we do? Well, here's how we summarize it. We are there to serve and bless. And I'll address this granny nanny thing in just a moment. So there's an example of an early morning breakfast. They came over ready to eat and Grammy is always ready to feed them. Now, here's the deal. We don't want to impose though. And so, you know, we want to make sure we're on the same page. Do you want us to feed them or if they're going to be up at your place? It all seems to work out if we just do a little communication. I love being with the little. Cheryl loves being with the littles. One of them likes puzzles. One likes to read. But my real role is the chauffeur driver, and I maximize that one-on-one -on -one time or one-on-two time as I'm taking kids to various things. And I love the thing I'm doing right now with our number four. He's five. We're reading just he and I reading the Chronicles of Narnia, and he's watched the movie, so he kind of tells me what's coming next in the book. It's very, very cute. Now, don't minimize it as you think about all this stuff, the, the whole issue of like dishes and whatnot, but I always want to cuddle. And uh, so we brought up this issue with them. Like, do we really feel like babysitting is our primary call to be down there? And we had a, a very thorough carefully thought out talk with our daughter. We love cuddling and holding, you know, a two-year-old, but we weren't there to be full-time substitute for daycare. And that was a tough conversation, but we want to be intentional grandparents first and second will be child care substitutes, etc. It's a little bit awkward. There was real possibility of hurt feelings, misunderstandings, and so we bathe that conversation in prayer. Now, one thing we believe that we should be doing is if we're down there, let's get them out of the house for two or three hours so they can get away to build into their marriage, and we lovingly and want to watch our kids during that time, and we do try to provide that date night regularly. Another practical question uh, I want to get to is, well, what do you do when you have one foot in one world and one in the other? How do you do church when you have a church in San Diego and a church in Agura Hills? And I think this whole coming out of retirement, I don't believe that pastors ever really retire. I still am a pastor and Lord knew he wasn't done yet. And so I'm back working at a church here as an interim. And I think for those of you on this call, some of you are pastors, some of you are not, but you have a hard time finding your niche after you, quote, retire. And so what I used to joke about, I do now, I am a free agent with the emphasis on free. And sometimes you got to find your niche because what they used to pay you for, you get to volunteer for, and it's all working out. And so we go to different churches currently, but we're about ready to join the same church uh, this next fall after I get done teaching in Glendora. Finding friends, pretty difficult. Although I had the privilege of being in a small group with uh, Barb Lorenz and some folks down in San Diego for a semester, we hardly could come, but they were so kind to us to let us pop in when it worked out. Now, as we do that, I want to suggest, and we're gonna go to a slide, avoid at all costs these three things. We learned this. And uh, that's just a random picture of, you know, our one of our, our grandson at a school thing. Here are three things we learned right off the bat. We're not having shaming parenting discussions. We don't act like we know more. In fact, we have no idea. You know, I had two kids. They have five. I don't give unsolicited advice. We are very careful of watching those boundaries. And please, 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 please don't be passive aggressive when you get your feelings hurt because your feelings might get hurt or they will get hurt. Let's just assume they will, right? We're human. So avoid those at all costs. 
All right, now number two, big idea, be careful about discipline. If you're gonna live near the house, but not in the house, be careful about discipline. You can see I was at Camp ABF with my kid, they, my, one of my grandsons. Uh, I'll talk more about that experience in this rite of passage when they are potty trained and what they get to do each summer. But this whole idea about being careful about discipline, because uh, they'll get you in this corner like, well, my mom says it's this, or my dad says it's okay. I don't want to get in the middle of all that. And so we try to, we're not tattling to our kids, but we want to make sure we're on the same page as um, they are, because we're not here to be the discipline. We're not to be the sheriff in town, etc. Here's a little principle. It's more important to do what is right versus being liked. And that's sometimes hard because we're holding the standards that they hold and we try to enforce them in the best, most positive way that we can. What's the number one thing we found in this one? I don't wanna be the guy breaking up the sibling rivalry discussions between a 10 year old and a eight year old or the little siblings that we call the littles uh, the two youngest ones. Uh, so we don't want to break up those things. Here's a phrase I've learned with them. Use your words. Tell them how you're feeling. And I go, it's amazing how teaching littles how to tell their siblings like they, they don't like that. We got one of them that's a jujitsu kid. And man, he is good. He's won winning medals. The rest of the family really don't want to be caught in a headlock. That's just not fun for them. In fact, I don't even want to take the kid on. He'd take me down. And the other thing that's huge for us, no screen time. We don't, we're not into the screen time. That's the parental decision about when they can be on screens, et cetera. And don't think that 10 year olds can't break into your phone and find your passcode. Just leave it at that. Even though they don't, because I hide my phone. Number three, create epic, memorable family experiences. That is so important. Now, I want you to look at this picture before we go away. That's an interesting outfit for my daughter, isn't it? Because every year for their birthday, they've been doing this for 10 years, the kids go to a thrift store and buy one item that they wear. So one bought the hat, one bought the necklace, one bought the purse, one bought the shoes, one bought the dress. And sometimes it matches, sometimes it doesn't, but it's always hilarious because they have to go out in public and celebrate together. It's a blast. Now, well, how do we create epic family experiences? Well, one is this thing called Camp ABF. And sometimes they get to do some things like this was a zoo event. We try to spend time with our kids. Our kids get away and our grandkids are with us. And so it's exhausting. You can see I have a sling on. I had a rotator cuff surgery two weeks before Camp ABF. We weren't sure we were gonna be able to do it, but it all worked out. And one of our big issues is that we understand that family vacations come with a price tag. By the way, it's a a picture we took at the wedding, but whatever you're gonna do, make sure that you talk that through. One thing that I did uh, two summers ago is I spoke at a family camp in Northern Pine. So welcome to all my Midwest friends that are on tonight. But I asked them, the camp, can I just waive my honorarium so I can bring my kids and grandkids? It was the best decision uh, we made. And they came and we flew to Wisconsin and spent a few days on a lake with some friends who were so kind to let us stay with them. And then we spoke at camp. Neither mom or grandma had to cook all week long. It was awesome. And we got to bless our kids and grandkids. That's the kind of thing. Some of you do cruises, whatever. But that's what we try to do to make it intentional. Now, I have some philosophy questions for you that I want you to look at here for a second as it relates to money, because no one wants to talk about this stuff. Nobody wants to talk. Is the money used for experiences with them or are you going to save it and give it to them when you die? That's something you got to think. You say, well, I won't have anything left when I die. Okay. Clarify who picks up the tab when we're going out to eat, because that's a way we bless them. Uh, I'm so glad our kids don't expect us to always pick up the tab. That gets quite expensive. We don't have dinner together every night, by the way. They have their dinners. We have ours. We have a family dinner once or twice a week. Um, We've talked to them about money. We want to invest in our grandkids for their college, if the Lord allows us to do that. And what are you going to do when you die? What, What kind of inheritance? You have a financial inheritance, but there is a spiritual inheritance that is so much 
more important. Number four, commit to being an intentional Christian grandparent. The other day I had uh, lunch with Wayne Rice, and this whole idea of short distance grandparenting is kind of the opposite of long distance grandparenting. And I, I, my heart goes out. I know some of you can't be around your kids. Your, your kids are not allowing them to be around you. And there's all kinds of things with obstacles to that. And so we don't want to squander this opportunity. So here's some things we've done to be intentional. Number one, we read The Treasure Tree by John Trent. And the kids all took the little kids version of the lion, otter, beaver, and golden retriever. And that was so much fun doing that. And so, you know, what does an otter look like? Or what? Are they, how are you like an otter? All that stuff. Another thing we do, um, I'm reading through the Chronicles of Narnia with one of our kids, Little Oaks. He's five. Pretty sure he's going to be a brain surgeon. He liked medical textbooks when he was three. It's crazy. He was wanted to be in school two years ago, and he's just now getting to go to kindergarten. But he loves that. I have found, and my wife and I have found, each kid has a different thing that they need from us. My oldest, he's he, I taught him golf. I play golf. We have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time just talking as we walk together. Our jujitsu guy, Rhett, number two, he needs meaningful touch, but he likes to touch everybody and put him in a headlock. We got to work on that. Oaks likes reading. Sailor, our, our, our oldest granddaughter, is not very tactile. She's not very, doesn't want to have you always touching her and hugging her. And But boy, does she love to have tea with Grammy. And she just has her tea early morning with Grammy, and they talk, 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 talk. It's awesome. And, of course, we don't know where Haven's at yet in terms of how that'll all play out. Now, what are some things that we do? Uh, these promise cards, every time we're with them for Camp Avia for a special time, we give these out, and then we take a picture of these just like that, and that um, – is something that I send to their mom so we can they can see what we're praying over them and how we're investing in them scripturally. That those cards are so awesome, and we're gonna probably go through the whole stack in this first year trying to give those out. Another thing that I think is really important in a, a weekly commitment is I love helping with they happen to homeschool and she has her own academy called the Bridge Christian Academy down there in San Diego, and we're helping with that. It's a homeschool, you know, uh, kind of private school experience. It's for homeschool parents who want to build community with other like-minded parents. And um, I love connecting spiritual values to the history lessons or whatnot. And I am pretty good with first grade math, if I might say my, so myself. And um, I, I, I wish I could see all your faces because... <laughs> I'm having a good time speaking into this screen, seeing my little mug that was pretty much for radio, not TV. Uh, that being said, uh, connecting with uh, them emotionally. How do you feel about that? Uh, and so, like, for Father's Day, they were up there with us at Camp ABF, and um, it's so great just being with them. And you're going to find this true. They are better behaved at our house in Agura than in our other house uh, in San Diego. I think that's just something we learned that they, they're all ears because it's just us with them. And, and it gives our kids a great reprieve. I'm sure they're counting the days till, till Haven is potty trained and they'll get an entire week of solitude. Um, the other thing is, I think that my wife has a skill that has long been lost with grandkids in teaching them how to cook and how food is used in the Bible to make a difference in people's lives. It says he's going to sit us at his banqueting table, his banner over me is love. So she is really good at, as she's cooking to, to talk about spiritual things with our kids. And then we loved it when we weren't there on the campus putting them to bed. But now as we live there, we're very careful about asking them to be, because I don't want to uh, mess up their routine, but you know, my kids never say no. Hey, Papa would like to read you tonight and pray over you as, as you go to bed. And um, they never turn me down. They like us doing that. We're like every family. They got a family movie night. They always pick the families. A lot of times they get to do that and go on a date. So, 
here's something I want to say, because it's really easy for you to compare your situation to someone else's and get jaded or jealous. And I think that it's so important for us to realize God put you where he put you for a reason. And we never dreamed we could do this, especially affording to do this. And we saved and scrimped and it's been a long haul, but we got it done. And now uh, eventually someday we believe this will be the home that we will quote really retire in and we'll be close to our kids, especially if we need some help in our elderly years, which I'm not claiming that I'm elderly. I'm not even sure I like getting, I do like the discounts, however, that's a whole nother deal. All right. As you can tell, I get a little random. I was a youth pastor. I've been a family pastor. I've been a senior pastor, but I'm a playful guy. And I think that God doesn't want us sucking on a dill pickle. It's time to laugh and rejoice no matter whether you find yourself in a difficult situation or not. Now, here's what you should have, like, this is like, get to the real stuff. Well, this is the final point. We have some fears. We had some concerns. What are those? You know, back in our day, we ate ice cream out of a toilet paper roll and didn't complain, right? So today, you know, with all the things that are going on with technology and what do kids need, let me give you some suggestions here. One at a time, each slide stands by itself. First of all, by being on the same property, we didn't want to be taken for granted. Um, and that's easy to get your feelings first because they don't come running up and hugging you every single second. Whereas when you see them a couple times a year, I mean, it's the, it's the real deal. Um, and so we, we try to keep it special. We try to uh, make sure that that is. Number two, we don't want to squander the opportunity because I'm worn out and lacking energy to engage. You know, this dog, by the way, will always engage with you. And how can you say no to her? Um, and so we do get tired and we have to be honest with our kids and our grandkids. Papa needs to take a nap. By the way, my wife is never tired. She is, she's the energizer bunny. I, it's just so unbelievable how energetic she is. Number three, we want to connect, but not have our grandkids expect that we'll always come with a gift or a present. That was something we worked through. They don't, aren't entitled at all. But you know, see that fire pit? That's the best thing to do is dig a hole in the ground. And we sit there and we talk and we hang out. We could go camping in our backyard any night we want. And that's a real treat for us. Um, we also are big into puzzles, which I don't have a puzzle picture, but that's pretty, pretty important. Then we already mentioned this, but we don't want to discipline our grandkids. And this is when they were dusting up as the Ninja Turtles, I think. And I don't know who's Donatello, but uh, so fun to just uphold their values. And they, I'm fortunate I got both my kids and their spouses love Jesus. That, you know, hasn't always been the case. Uh, but in this particular case, they all love Jesus right now. Here's a real concern that no grandparent really wants to admit to. I don't want to get sick. I want to stay healthy. I was so fortunate, you know, we made it all through COVID and we were down there even while I was working and we were working remotely and um, we just want to stay healthy and whatnot. Then my last little caution, and it's really a, a prayer of, as I kind of land this plane, is this idea. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, and you notice I'm holding up a phone because I almost any millennial Gen Z now, our kids, we, they actually would teach them how to read from the Bible, but I'm going to read from my phone. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, let not the mighty man boast in his might, let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let him boast, boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For these things I delight, declares the Lord. So I got two handsome men there. So the world says brains, brawn, or beauty, and bucks. That's what... what uh, is important but we know as an intentional grandparent we want our grandkids to love jesus to know him and so i want to close with this little story that i've been using for years and we'll wrap up our time and uh we'll probably take some questions here at the end you know at the turn of the century there was a famous pianist by the name of paderewski that was touring all over america doing concerts and a young mom with a nine-year-old took their took her kid to the, see him in in new york city and 
and it was a packed crowd of several hundred people, maybe a thousand people or more in this auditorium. And there's a lone grand piano on the, on the, on the stage there. And sure enough, she turned her head and where's her nine year old son? He's nowhere to be found. And to her horror, she sees him at the piano and in front of several hundred, yea, thus verily thousand of people, he starts playing chopsticks on the piano. And he, she's like horrified, this is my son. And it's cute for a moment, but people started booing and hissing and get him off the stage. What's he doing here? Where's his mother, et cetera, et cetera. And Paderewski quietly steps out on stage, puts his arm around the kid. And as he's playing chopsticks, he plays this beautiful counter melody. And the entire time, what the newspapers never reported said this, don't stop, keep on playing, don't quit, you can do it. And that, my friend, is the words that God has for you in your parenting and grandparenting journey. Some of you are the custodial parents of your grandkids. Some of you get to never see your grandkids. Some of you are forbidden to talk about spiritual things with your grandkids. We have every kind of grandparent represented. And I want to tell you that God is telling you today, don't stop. Keep on doing it. Keep on playing. You're in this grandparenting game for the long haul. God bless you. Thanks so much for listening tonight. Thank you so much, John. Wow, what great uh, practical lessons and from your passion and your heart you shared with us tonight. And you're right, whether our grandkids are living in the same house or in the same block or in the same compound or far away, those are wonderful uh, tips and suggestions um, that you shared with us tonight. So we will definitely take those to heart. We really appreciate it. Grandparents, if you have a question for John, go ahead and put it in the Q&A. We've got some questions for you. Awesome. Okay. Question number one, how do you weave in time with your older child and his family? All right, so Katie's 39, John Daniel's 37. He's recently married, no kids, and I'm, we spend time with both of them. The, the newlyweds, you won't believe this, they did eight or nine sessions with the marriage and family therapist before they got married, but we took them through the last six months before they got married, the book Love and Respect by Emerson Egridge, and we Zoomed together there in the city of Orange by Chapman College, we're up in Agura. So we spent a lot of time. Through the years, spent a lot of time with my son. He's a golfer. I have rotator cuff surgery. This is how much I can lift my arm. So I have lots of time to talk now. Well, that's great. So, right, and they, they live near you, right? In the yeah, so if you go down the coast, we're up in L.A. County, Ventura County, they're in Orange County, and our kids and grandkids are in San Diego County. And we just happened to be in Orange about a yeah. week ago, so we know right yeah. where you're talking about. Yep. So here's another one. What do you use to intentionally tell your young grandkids about Jesus? Believe it or not, well, you know, these things work. This, this transitions and those promise cards are two things that that just naturally steers the conversation of spiritual things. For 44 years, you know, early on I was a youth pastor. Getting kids to talk, um, that was always the deal, you know. Someone else drive the bus, I'll sit in a seat, and I just ask, I'm a pretty good question asker, and I ask them a boatload of questions, and every grandkid wants to talk about himself, let me tell you. And so I usually can read scripture to them and apply it to some situation they're going, especially when their feelings get hurt or their friends are mean to them or, you know, you know, all the things grandkids go through. So Yeah. 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 Those cards have been incredible. They're one of our most popular resources. You can go to our legacy coalition website, by the way, if you don't have them, Gary and I use them often and you're so right, John, they just open up these amazing conversations. Your kids ask you, you ask your kids. One of the last times we used him, our eight-year-old grandson uh, was up for a question and he asked me, tell me how you first found out about Jesus Christ in your life. Whoa, that was amazing. I got a chance to share that. Okay. Hey, can I show you this? Do you see this? 
This is the thing I wear on my wrist, and my older grandkids wear this. It's a thing that we use with Fellowship of Christian Athletes and crew, and it's a heart, a division sign, a cross, and a question. And some other time, I've taught my kids how to use that and share with their teams. Share with your team. So that's great. Yeah, that's a great resource. Okay, do you jointly own the property of your family compound? Yeah, so this is interesting. You know, we saved and scrimped and whatnot, but we had some inheritance money and whatnot. And I said I only wanted to be 70-30 being the 30. Well, it started off a little more than that once we got past the down payment. And it was a wreck. So we put a, you know, we had to do a lot of sweat equity that we credited to their side of the the deal. And um, the deal is when it's all said and done, you know, it's going to go to our kids and our grandkids. And we have other ambitions to help with college education and some other things too. But uh, I just want to be clarified. I didn't work at the churches that paid the most, but I can tell you what my church has allowed me to do is they gave me time to invest in my kids and grandkids for 45 years and to be places and create experiences. When we were younger, we never went on some fancy vacation. You know how we did vacation? I spoke at Trout Lake Camp in Minnesota. I, I would say yes to every family camp because mom wouldn't have to cook. Our kids got to play and got, dad got, and where do you get to go on vacation, get paid to speak, you know? So if someone wants to know, can you do it? You can do it, but you've got to make some sacrifices to get there. Great story, John. Okay, so when do you find the most effective moments to have spiritual or biblical converse, conversations with your grandkids? Three times, and it comes right out of Deuteronomy 6. The early birds, those littles, come over early in the morning. That's when I read the Chronicles of Narnia and talk to a five-year-old. My wife goes out on the patio and has tea with Selah, one-on-one. We each take one. Uh, around food, the older kids, no. if you feed them, they will come, right? And so the in-and-out run with the older kids is a tradition, and there we talk about stuff. Because there's a big homeless population in San Diego, and we have kits, homeless kits in our cars with socks and stuff and bottled waters there. So you know how Jesus saw what was around him and used illustrations? Everything in life is an illustration for me. I see things, I go, I could talk about that. And I know that I can't put that in a one, two, three. It's just the way God wired me. I see something and we talk about it. Great, John. Well, you've been really helpful. We got a lot of uh, grandparents telling what a blessing it was tonight and how much they learned and enjoyed from hearing your family story. Um, So thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to get to know you and I get to see you from time to time. So um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. What a great evening it's been tonight. I appreciate all of you so much. And one one of the things I love among many with our grandparents is, uh, you know, occasionally we tonight went very smoothly. Once in a while, we have a little glitch, but you're loving and caring. And I always pray each Monday night, God, make this message clear to our grandparents, regardless of what else might happen. Speak to them, speak to us, and and he always does. So have a fantastic week, and next week's going to be powerful. So we'll look forward to seeing you next Monday night. You take care. Mm